Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to 30 Days of Python. My name is Destiny and I'm very happy to welcome you all to the Ultimate Python Masterclass of 2021. So I was scrolling around YouTube the other day looking for some really nice Python course and there are lots of courses out there that are not really beginner friendly and I thought it would be amazing if I make a free Python masterclass course here on YouTube for total beginners and I got over 95% yes on my Instagram post so you wished and here is it. When I was starting out with programming everything seemed strange, boring, annoying because I didn't have the right hand or people to guide me and I don't want that to repeat itself in your case. So in this course I'll hold your hands as a total beginner and take you step by step from a beginner to a professional level in python and in just a couple of days you should be creating awesome things like web scrapers calculators guessing games madlib games and some really artificial intelligence apps and even some really amazing things like music player interesting right yeah so i want to get your mind ready and prepared firstly when starting out as a programmer you should expect errors like lots of it and as a programmer you are expected to debug the errors don't let this overwhelm you or make you hate coding or quit no it's just a stepping stone even programmers like larry page bill gates mark zuckerberg ken thompson leo Torvald encountered problems and went through it so you should too and in no time you will be among the list two i wanted to get a pen and a book i never knew how useful this could be for beginners till my later days into coding nobody told me taking notes are the best way to learn trust me with great use of pen and a book you are good to go it helps you make references easily and quickly you don't have to come back to this video when you forget a line of code or a block of code you just go to your lovely book and boom you're back on the track so get a pen and a book and you are ready to go three you need to devote time to programming good programmers spend a minimum of eight hours a day coding i don't mean you should do that if you're working or a mother or father you definitely can do that but any spare time is really useful watch videos take notes listen to coding podcasts read documentations and make sure you're trying your best to be productive and trust me your hard work would definitely pay off four you need to teach what you are learning learning and teaching what you are learning would make what you have learned stick in your memory for a longer period of time and make you understand better so create a youtube channel or get a facebook page or instagram igtv and make sure you're teaching whatever you're learning here number five you need to practice this is obviously important you need to practice i can't overstress that because i want to be sure that some of y'all here knows that practice makes perfect so this is it hopefully you enjoyed my little advice and if you did do drop a like on this video i love y'all so let's get into the work firstly i'll show you guys how to install python and some necessary things like getting an editor or id so let's get started So you want to open up a browser and firstly we need to download python so in order to do that you could just go ahead and type out download python as easy as that and it should take you to the to the official python website page which is python.org so you just want to open this up and when it's open up you can see that there's the latest version here which is um python 3.9.5 and let's say you're using the linux or mac os you could go for other ones like this you just click on this link over here or click on this one if you're on the mac but i want to windows let's stick with windows so you, you just want to click on download 3.9.5 and just take a look at it over here when it gets downloaded just like a normal executable file all you have to do is run it and install it so i already have it on my pc so i don't really need to install it again i'll just go ahead and cancel this so after installing python the next thing you want um, is like a code editor or the ide where you would write your code for sure you can write your code in the command prompt or something like that or terminal if you're on a mac but i don't think that's really advisable so you need to get a code editor on ide and in my case I'll be showing you guys two of my best code editors and ID. The first one is PyCharm. The first one is PyCharm. And the next one is Visual Studio Code. PyCharm is like an IDE that was professionally developed for web developers, mainly using Python, and not just web developers, for programmers also, mainly using Python. So you wanna download it, just come over to jetbrains.com slash PyCharm, and you should get this official page over here. So all you have to do is click on this download over here, and it will bring you up to this page. Now, you can either choose to get a, a free trial of the professional package, or you could just get a free, 
open source community package for pure Python development. But I'd recommend you just stick with this one for the meantime. And all you have to do is click on this and it should download just as any other normal application would download. And when it's done, what you want to do is run it as a normal executable file and install it. So let's go ahead and cancel this. I already have it on my PC. You don't have to do that again. And you could also use Visual Studio Code. It's really, really amazing when you want to write codes and you're using Visual Studio Code. So in this course, I'll be using PyCharm throughout because I really love using it while writing Python codes. When your PyCharm is done installing and you are done installing Python, all you have to do is go ahead and open up PyCharm. So when you're done installing PyCharm, all you have to do is open it up and let's go through the customization settings and all that. So this is my PyCharm over here. It's opening up now. Okay, and this is the default page that welcomes you to PyCharm. So you could just go ahead and create a new project or you customize a few things here. So let's just click on customize and let's say you don't like the dark theme, you could just change it to IntelliJ light or you could change it to the high contrast. But for the main time, I prefer the dark cooler, which is on the dark theme. So you could go ahead and still change your font size and your editor's font and all that. But let's just go ahead and create a new project. So I want to create a new project and we could just leave this over here. So when creating a new project, you want to look out for some things in Python. First of all, you are seeing new environments using virtual ENV. And I know you might not understand what virtual ENV means right now, but I'll see explain all that in this video. So all you want to do is click on this one over here, previously come figured interpreter so when you click on this what you want to do is click on the three dots over here and from here we want to install this we want to use the interpreter that was installed by python so what you want to do is click on system interpreter over here and you want to click on ok so hopefully you understood what i did i clicked on those three dots over here i clicked on system interpreter then i clicked um i think on system interpreter then i clicked on ok but since i already did it it won't show up here any longer so this is it over here as you can see python 3.9 and all you have to do is click on create so let's wait for this to load up and we are good to go okay and it loads up so this is the pycharm application the pycharm id that's used for writing python codes so when you open it up it shows you tip of the day in some cases you wouldn't want to see this every day it's kind of annoying so i just go ahead and close this and over here is some default code by pycharm so before we go ahead and start writing the code i want to talk to you guys about python like what is python and uh, like basic things you need to know about python so let's just go ahead and start talking about those if you're looking to pivot to a career in web or software development, it's always a savvy way to break into tech. You can't go wrong learning the foundational trial of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But to really stand out in the crowded field of applicants, you'll eventually need to add additional programming languages to your toolkit. That's where things can get tricky because there are so many coding languages out there and how can you know which ones are worth learning? No, it's not time to pick a name out of a hat. It's about figuring out which programming language will give you the highest return of investment. And that brings us to learning python we put together this guide on python that starts from like the very beginning then dives deep into some reasons why you should consider learning python so first of all we want to see um the first in our list which is what is python so python is a general purpose coding language which means that on like html css and javascript it can be used for other types of programming and software development besides web development and python can be used for things like back-end or server-side web and app development, desktop and software development, processing big data and performing mathematical computations, writing system scripts and all that. But don't let Python's broad range scare you. Just like those more familiar sounding language, Python is easy to learn. In-demand programming language that can exponentially increase your chance of getting hired and income in a matter of months. Who is Python good for? Python is a rising star in the programming world for two main reasons. The big range of tasks it can handle combined with the fact that it's actually a very beginner friendly language. Python code syntax uses English keywords and that makes it easy for anyone to understand and get started with the language. For example, take a look at the code you'd use to print the text hello world on your screen. In other programming language like Java, 
that's a lot of code for such a simple function now take a look at the same code that you can use to write the same thing in python so as you can see this is really short no questions which one would you rather work with still as simple as python syntax looks it's used for projects as complicated sounding as artificial intelligence and machine learning that means python is a great fit for a wide range of users including beginning coders web and mobile app developers software engineers data scientists and anyone else who working with or learning about computer programming but what does that mean to you funny you should ask because we've put together 13 reasons why you should consider learning and using python as soon as possible first one on our list is there are lots of python jobs as of this video indeed does come list out almost 69,000 python related job openings because python programming can be used in so many ways there are python jobs to fit every level of your experience and employment interests including quality assurance engineer roles entry-level software engineers positions and high-level jobs like machine learning and artificial intelligence engineers too and python means a pretty great salary you know that three startup loves python because of its easy code syntax and all that four python doesn't take long to learn for as powerful as versatile as a language as python you might think it should take like a year to learn python not so industry professionals say that python basics like the basics things about python like the syntax keywords and data types can be learned in as little as six to eight weeks if you have previous experience with coding languages you can learn python basics for free that's number five number six python has a supportive user community like python is an open source coding language meaning it's free to use and anyone can modify or create extensions for the python language being open source is what allows languages to have libraries frameworks and other tools that keep the python language relevant and adaptable over time but open source only lives up to the potentials if there's a supportive community of users engaged with the language number seven python is the popular key does it matter if a programming language is popular yes it kind of does if the world best coding language has no users it's sort of like that proverbial tree that falls into the forest it doesn't matter because no one's using it number eight python is versatile and versatility as a developer is a good thing number nine python means the front and back end of your project will work better together number 10 you can use python out of the box programming with some languages can become tedious and unwidely but not python python comes out with a robust standard library right out of the box like the sense frameworks and other add-ons making for more efficient coding process python stands library number 11 then there are add-ons for whatever you need if you do need something more customizable than the ready to go python setup no problem similar to languages like javascript there is no shortage of libraries and frameworks for python to fit your specific coding needs popular frameworks like django are designed to make python more effective at creating web applications why PyQt is a framework that allows Python to build graphical user interfaces like the GUIs user interface that involves the use of on-screen icons and graphics to process user command. Number 12, Python automates all the boring stuff that you can think about. One of the hardest parts of working in tech, regardless of your role, is managing all those repetitive time-consuming tech-related tasks. Little things like copied files, dragging folders around, and renaming them, uploading assets to save us. This is all add up to a lot of time in the long run. Automation is another area where it pays to learn Python. Python's ability to write system scripts means you can create simple Python programs to automate mindless tasks. Number 13, Python gives you the tool to work anywhere in the tech. Any Python code does more than future proof you for internet development is to prepare you for the future of tech jobs, period. I think we are done talking about Python basics now. Let's go ahead and start writing some real codes in Python. All we have to do now is open up our PyCharm again. Hello guys and welcome back here. So let's start writing some Python code. So the first thing I want to show you guys in Python is using the print statement. So what is the print command in Python? This is used to display code output on the front end or let's say on the terminal for simple code. Example, we can see something like print, print my name, print my name. So when we run this now, let's see what we have. As you, can, as you can see it says my name so let's say i want to print your name and let's say your name is tim and let's just leave tim over here and when you run this again you get tim so what a print function does is like 
allowing you to display a code that you have written on the terminal. So it's as easy as saying something like display my code. So this is not a function. I'm just trying to show you guys something. You're trying to say like something like display, display this on the terminal, on the terminal. And whatever you want to display, you pass it in here as a string. And I know that you might not know what strings are now, but we'll show you that very soon in this course. So just stick around. There's one more thing I want to show you guys about printing Python. Let's say I want to print um, something like my, my name is Destiny. And I want to duplicate this in four places. So let's duplicate this in four places. Now, when I run this, you see that it gets printed in four places over here, right? But how about I want to change this one to my name is Tim and I'll change this to my name is Karin and I'll change this to my name is Henry. Now, when I run this, take a close look at what happens. It gets printed the way they were arranged in the code. The first one is Destiny, the second is Tim, the third is Karin, the fourth is Henry, and that's how it gets printed. So when using the print function in Python, the way you arrange your code is the way it's gonna be printed out. So let's say I wanna take this ones over here and, and let's say I wanna bring them to the bottom like this. Now when you run this, take a look at what happens. The first one becomes Henry, the second becomes Destiny, the third Tim, and the fourth Karin. So that's it for print and in the next video we'll be diving deep into some really nice things in Python. So I hope I'll see you there and if you did enjoy this video, then make sure to drop a like and consider subscribing to stay updated with the 30 days of Python as we are dropping every single day. And I hope I'll see you in the next video. Bye and stay safe for now.